Hello everyone. After two weeks of waiting, the long-awaited second part of the 100th episode of the Skibidi Wars series has finally been released. And trust me, what you see will blow your mind. An epic battle awaits us today between the traitors of the Skibidi army and Toilet Emperor himself. Verlance also left some secrets and hidden details for us, which I will tell you about at the end of the video. Well, if you're really ready to find out how the battle between the aliens ended and see how old friends rebelled and tried to destroy their boss, then put all your business aside for the next 10 minutes and trust me. Today I will analyze the second part of the 100th episode for you, and then show you all the secrets and easter eggs that you didn't notice. What new plan did Tri-Titan come up with, and where did he go at the end of the episode? Who is this new monster that Toilet Necromancer has moved his soul into? And how strong is he? Which characters are finally back in the series? What did Verlins tell me about this secret knight and why did he take over the Emperor's mind? The episode lasts as long as five and a half minutes, so get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end, because I saved the juiciest part for later just as always. Let's go! Well, more than two weeks have passed since the release of the first part, so let me quickly refresh your memory and remind you what happened there so that you finally understand where the hell this monster came from. It all started when the Titans went back to the headquarters of the Alliance, and after that we saw a short scene where Malware said that he was finally able to find a place where Toilet Necromancer was hiding, to which the Emperor immediately ordered him to go for a cup of tea with the traitor. Meanwhile, an epic battle began between the aliens during which Tri-Titan destroyed his younger sister forever. And if you don't understand why the big boy flew into a rage, then the answer lies in the 99th episode, where this dumbass mistakenly took TV woman for an enemy and decided to taste her. But in fact, this cute girl was the love of the whole life for Tri-Titan and did everything possible to ensure that the alien was free. This dude acted like a real man and avenged his lady and sent Tri-Pink to a better world forever. But of course her brother didn't like it at all, and he also wanted revenge. Lil Alien attacked Tri-Titan, and a crazy battle began between the two that then moved into space. The computer men's race watched this battle while eating popcorn and tried to figure out what to do next, because their previous plan to regain control of Tri-Titan failed because of TV Woman, whose memory returned and she prevented the Titans from doing their job. But there is also good news. While the two aliens are trying to destroy each other, the Alliance will have a little more time to unite at the main headquarters from Episode 97 and come up with a new plan. Well, now we are moving to the very location where the traitor Necromancer was hiding, and Malware brought the Emperor in here so that he personally set the brains of the Freak right. As it turned out, though, Necromancer did not sit idle all this time and created a huge army of the undead. And then an interesting conversation began between former friends, as a result of which the Emperor deprived the traitor of his head. But Necromancer turned out to be not so simple, so he continued to call the Emperor with lots of bad words, and after that moved his soul to a new body. Verlins did not show us exactly who the traitor had moved into, but Jimmy himself came to his defense. Now you are all set and ready, and the second part of the 100th episode is already on your screens. I also want to ask you to subscribe right now and help me reach my main goal of getting 100,000 subscribers by the end of this month. We have very little left, and I hope you will help me with this, my friends. Okay, at the very beginning you see what the first part ended with. The soul leaves the necromancer's skull and flies to an unknown place. G-Man appears in a very epic way, and it seems like he is not going to run away anymore, so he demonstrates his new guns to uninvited guests. But this powerful attack gets easily blocked by the Emperor with the help of his hands, which seem to absorb the energy of G-Man's weapons or something like that. And for such arrogance, the boss strikes back. But Jimmy is also not so simple, and shows another improvement of his, as now he has a green shield that reminds me very much of the shield of Titan Cameraman from the 64th episode of the original series by Boom. Okay, this thing really withstands the Emperor's shot, and G-Man shows us a few more novelties, Two additional mechanical legs appear from the sides of his toilet tank, and he uses them to stand firmly on the ground. With the help of his guns, G-Man begins to accumulate huge amount of energy that transforms into this round thing, and it seems like the guys decided to play some baseball and Jimmy throws the ball right at the Emperor. But Malware covers his boss, and with the help of Gravity Gun sends the ball back to G-Man. I'm sorry my friend, but I can't help but say this. At the moment when Jimmy stood on mechanical legs and began to create a ball, 
in this position, he reminded me very much of a dung fly, which also gets up on its paws and starts rubbing its paws against one another. Okay, the baseball game continues and the Emperor's team earns the first point. Malware is a tough guy, so he decides to destroy G-Man on his own, but suddenly he gets attacked by the infected Sonar Titan. Malware uses Gravity Gun again and introduces the Titan's body closer to the Earth. Meanwhile, the Emperor is tired of playing these games, and calms G-Man with one powerful blow, and promises to give him eternal rest. But something really strange is happening afterwards. A poisonous green liquid flies into his head, which then begins to corrode the Emperor's helmet, while the vile G-Man is enjoying the moment of glory, and attacks the distracted poor man again. As it turned out, the Plague Toilet used poisonous projectiles, who also joined the squad of traitors. If we don't talk about the secret scene, the last time we saw this dude was in episode 90, and he also got a lot of improvements. Now the Plague Doctor uses mechanical legs and an additional cannon with the poisonous liquid in it. And there are also several helicopter blades above his toilet that allow him to fly and another warning sign with a skull appeared on his shoulder. The unequal battle continues. The Emperor has a pretty hard time, and in addition to this, someone shoots him in the arm which causes it to fall off and remain lying on the ground. Two freaks surround the poor guy and begin to attack him, and this makes the Emperor very angry, and he uses all his energy to destroy at least one of them. The Plague Doctor takes advantage of this moment, and a poisonous syringe with a green liquid inside appears from his cannon, and then he gives an injection to a sick patient in the arm, but instead of treatment, this vaccine corrodes the Emperor's hand from the inside and deprives him of another weapon. Fortunately, the dude has two additional hands, and it seems all these attacks only provoked him more as he gets into an epic pose and calls on cowards to fight him face to face. But I think the blood simply does not know what awaits him next. Two green eyes can be seen from this very cave into which the necromancer's soul flew away, and in parallel with this, the psychopath's laughter can be heard, so it's time to take a look at his new body. It seems that a huge monster was created from a mixture of various garbage, toilets, cameras, speakers, and microphones. His face still resembles a skull, and on his head there are huge horns which make him look similar to a real devil. The huge monster begins to scream at the top of his voice, and it seems that his appearance really scares the Emperor as he calls him abomination and uses his core in the hope of destroying this pile of garbage. But unfortunately, there are too many traitors. None other than Phantom Toilet also comes to the party and blocks this attack. So the three traitors begin to gradually destroy their former leader, and the final shot is inflicted by the Toilet Necromancer and his attack makes the Emperor fall on his ass, and the brother does not have enough strength to continue fighting for his life. The Plague Doctor and Jimmy grab his hands, and a small conversation takes place. The Emperor tries to convince the traitors that they need him, to which Necromancer agrees and says that he will be an excellent servant for them. The Phantom Toilet flies closer to the Emperor's face and uses a white ray to brainwash the poor dude, and Toilet Malware should expect the same fate as after infection his entire body changes color from yellow to white, and within a few seconds we see that the same thing happened to the Emperor. Now his mind belongs to the Phantom Toilet, and the puppet says that he is ready to serve, and after that, something really amazing happens. The Necromancer's soul completely moves into the monster's mouth, and when the camera zooms in, we see who was behind it all this time. As it turned out, this is a strange demon resembling a knight, and instead of a face he has a skull and there is a toilet under it. He has mechanical arms, and on his head there is a huge helmet with demonic horns, and also on his shoulders there are these two skulls. At first sight, I didn't quite understand who this mysterious stranger was, and I asked Verlins to tell me more about him, so he said that this is Necromancer himself. And he did the same thing as the scientist toilet from the original series. Namely, he created a body of the size of a titan that he can control from the inside. As it turned out, inside of the soul that was constantly moving between different bodies, this guy was actually hiding, as he is immortal, and is now officially the new emperor of the Skibidi army. The only thing I don't understand is why the phantom toilet actually serves him. Think for yourselves, my friends. This bug is very strong and has various abilities that even surpass Necromancer's tricks. So why doesn't he just hypnotize this psychopath just like he did with the Emperor? Well, I have an interesting theory about this. As I understand it all, the puppets in Necromancer's hands are green, and all those who are under the control of Phantom are white. 
What if Necromancer and Phantom Toilet have entered into an agreement, and according to the plan, the psychopath will have to betray the Emperor and create an army of the undead, after which he will rise up and with the help of Phantom take the place of leader in the Skibidi army, and in return for this Phantom Toilet will gain full control over the Emperor's and Malware's bodies. Write in the comments your own theories about why Phantom serves to the Toilet Necromancer, and I will pin the most interesting one of them under this video. Okay, after this epic performance we return to space where two aliens are fighting, and it looks like Tri-Yellow is having serious difficulties and cowardly escapes from the big boy back to the planet. Two brothers decide to take a hot bath somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but their rest gets interrupted when Lil Alien suddenly appears from under the water. His body was pierced by Tri-Titan's sword, and this means that the big boy still managed to win an epic battle. He strung the poor guy's body on his blade like a kebab on a skewer and then sends his body to feed the fish to the bottom of the ocean. The upset Tri-Titan was able to avenge his beloved TV woman, but at what cost? He had to destroy two aliens who arrived to help him, and now the big guy has no plan, and he flies away in an unknown direction. I think we will see Tri-Titan very soon and that the Chad actually flew away from this planet in search of new meanings of life, and I'm sure that now all the focus of the series will be concentrated on the new Emperor of the Skibidi Army. Most likely in the next episode, we will see the battle between the Skibidi Toilets led by Necromancer and the Alliance. It is also possible that the two Titans who teamed up with the Emperor in Episode 97 will return to headquarters and tell that now the Skibidi army is on their side in the war against the aliens, and this will be used by an insidious psychopath who will strike an unexpected blow. And that was all for today. Write your opinion in the comments below about what awaits us next. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!